Thank you. Um, I would like to start by thanking Ubaba um, Um Pondo. Unfortunately, he's left us early. A patriotic Putuami Ngalo Ngabuto. And then Unjov. Uh, and the young men who were the main presenters today. Uh, I think I've learned a lot. You always think that you know everything. But attending such uh, meetings, you gather a lot and your brain is sharpened. Um, let me just jump straightly to your to your question. Um, is Jonathan Bates there? Yes. Yeah, very good question. And a lot of people have been asking, even when we started talking about uh, the movement being a political party, they mentioned that as well. So it's not something new. Um, why I mentioned that we would love to have a situation by, by in our country where we have small political parties participating in national de debates, I think it will create a health situation. Because if you look currently, we only have uh, two political parties that are in parliament. Chamber Mliskwa is out now uh, as an independent in this current parliament. So we only have two political parties. And the debates there, from my experience as a former member of parliament, we are, you know, wallowed into say what we want to say when we're in parliament. You know, we are guided in other ways. You are not independent. You might have your own personal issues that you might want to contribute to the national cause, but you're always, you know, guided by the party's uh, uh, constitution, if I may say that. So a lot of small parties disappear. Yes, I want to agree to you. I think that's your, that is your question. When they want to contest and then they fail and then they disappear. I think there's, um, there's no collaboration between political parties. We want a political parties that is like myself, e-movement is for Sululu. When most of these political parties are formed, the emphasis is mainly on the president, no one else. And that's a challenge we have, even with Triple C. If Nelson Chamisa goes now, what will be left with a, a, a Triple C? It's not there. So it's a crisis that we are identifying now that uh, we need <coughs> small parties. That's why some of us have decided, no, let's come up with another political party with a different ideology. But we should come together and um, and unite as uh, small political parties and at least at least have i would say three or four powerful political parties i'll give a good example of zapu i myself when i engaged uh, when I I, I I i began politics the cornerstone was the reading of uh, joshua Komo's book and i'm so passionate about uh, Father Zimbabwe, who was a nationalist, and E movement is a patriotic and nationalist uh, uh, movement. We put the country first, not the party first. So, small parties are needed. They contribute a lot. I can see even uh, Ngabuto here with his uh, uh, socialist party. If he was in parliament, you can imagine what kind of contribution would be added to the August House and other small parties who have powerful uh, uh, um, uh, leaders in them. Um, let me dwell on the questions that uh, you've asked uh, uh, our chairman here, or our presenter, uh, to talk about sanctions. If e-movement were to become uh, the government of today, there won't be sanctions. And I personally believe that in Zimbabwe, there are no sanctions. I know you've said that uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, we have to admit that there are sanctions. When I was in MDC, we perceived them as restrictive measures as MDC. We didn't take them as sanctions. Why? Simply because if I am in Slovela Day, how do sanctions affect me? In fact, the United States are the ones who are providing aid to most of these uh, uh, rural area, uh, rural folks in terms of U.S. aid. Sakatrukuti, what are sanctions really? So it's a question that uh, was debated during the uh, GNU, and I want to add further that sanctions was one of the four outstanding conditions that were left out in the GPA. Unfortunately, most of the parties, and to me, it's, 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 it really it disheartened me because uh, even the leaders in the political parties are not talking about 
we're only talking about electoral reforms now because we are going towards the elections. But there are security reforms that needs to be done. There are media reforms. I think Ngawuto is touched on the issue of, the, of, of engaging the army. Those are some of the issues that we should be talking about. But now it's silent. Media, silent. And the, the, on the report of the, the Sadak report, they picked it up. That media is biased towards ZANU-PF, ZBC. All small parties, they tried to, you know, to fix it and put AMA small parties to contribute, but it was too late. ZANU, it's all ZANU-PF on ZBC. So those are some of the issues that we should start talking about. Serious issues. So those four outstanding issues, I remember very well, because when I was member of parliament by then, Chabombeke came and emphasized on those four conditions. Uh, I said uh, uh, it was the, 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 the um, uh, reforms on media, reforms on, on, on security, and reforms on the electoral. It was a task given to MDC by then. It was MDCT and MDCN to go out and remove sanctions. And Morgan Changirai, Walshman, Mube, and I think they went with Zanu, Mzembe. They went all over the, all over the world to try and remove those uh, 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 sanctions. But unfortunately, they failed. It was a condition put by Zanu PF, and up to now, nothing has changed. So we must start talking about those issues. Uh, then there's a call, call uh, you, you asked that you should talk about to, to unite the opposition. And I think Umawa Umpondo, I actually thanked him when I met him outside there, that there's need now for all small political parties and even the big parties, uh, our big brother, uh, Triple C, uh, to come and join us so that we can form a united front to fight ZANU PF. We cannot go to 2028 in this state. And this is the right opportunity for us because at least we've got support of, support of, uh, of SADAC, support of the AU and the EU and other observers. They saw what happened. We know. We cannot have another election in these conditions. I personally knew that we are not going to win elections. That's why we didn't even bother to participate. I tried to talk to some members in Triple C, most of them I know. I even tried to send some messages to the president of Triple C that why are you going into these elections? When we know very well that ZEC is partisan. As a solution to that is us as e-movement. <clears throat> and I think Uwa Pond has mentioned that. ZEC, the current ZEC must be disbanded, dismantled and a new ZP formulated through the Act of Parliament. And I believe that's why I'm talking about small parties, that each small party or any party should have its own members in ZAC so that it really becomes a wholly independent, transparent body, not the one that we have currently. He's Zanu PF Liana, that's not ZAC. <clears throat> if you dig deep in that, most of those people are running that institution. They are former CIOs. When I went there, I'm not shy to say this, to register, e-movement is a political party. And what I received from those guys, it was terrible. Then the moment I told them that I was a former member of parliament, then they, they moved back. They wanted all the information. Then I said, no, we just want to register. We say, we, we're not going to participate in these elections. We are going to participate in maybe the next forthcoming elections. And it was the same thing that I, I, I faced when I went to, 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 to apply for, for a demonstration at the Harare Central Police. You cannot go there. They will toast you, those guys. It's all ZANPIF. They don't want any demonstration. But in our constitution, it clearly states that a demonstration is an equal right for anyone to demonstrate against anything. And that's the way that we are pushing forward. We have written letters. Uh, to ZEC first and to most of the government institutions, to the president who participated, to the parties and other stakeholders and said we are not recognizing the current government. It's null and void. And we called upon ZEC to do that. But I know obviously they're not going to do that. And we called upon the opposition, which is triple C, and ZANU PF to engage and sort the mess that is in our country. I would have loved if ZANU PF and Triple C were not there 
I think our country would be in a better position. <laughs> That's me, <clears throat> personally. And then when it comes to our big brother, Triple C, it's said though, <laughs> many people are asking me, prominent people, even in my constituency, Strobella, why don't you join Triple C and then you become a member of parliament there? And I simply say, no, I'm not in there to benefit myself. I don't want to be a leader who's just going to have a big pocket, you know, like most African leaders. We are there to steal from the public. We now need leaders. We've got people at heart. Leaders who are going to take Zimbabwe to a greater height. Zimbabwe is a beautiful and rich country. I personally believe Zimbabwe is one of the richest countries, not only in Africa, but in the world. Long before we reached that South Africa. I remember when I started doing my banking uh, work at Standard Merchant Bank. Our Zimbabwe dollar was stronger than most of these currencies. It was even stronger than, stronger than the rand. When I came here in 1994 for my first visit here, it was on a holiday. I think our dollar, you had to get two rands for our dollar. Which means that Zimbabwe is still a rich country, but with no leadership. The crisis that we have currently is that we don't have leadership. Triple C sees itself as another ZANU PF. That's according to me and some of my, my fellow members. Why am I saying that? Because if it had won this election, mark my words now, it was going to be like ZANU PF. Nothing was going to change because they were going to enjoy what the PF guys are enjoying currently. You see, that's the challenge we have. If these elections were free and fair, I'm telling you now, Triple C, we're going to have a two-thirds majority. And I have worked with most of those uh, guys in Triple C. I've worked with them. Even with the Triple C leader, I was in the National Organizing Committee of MDC. Yes, we agree on many other things, but in terms of uh, our, our, our value system, we differ. We as e-movement, we value integrity, which is honesty. We value transparency. Like now in Triple C, the party is structureless and look at the problems that are, are being caused. And it's affecting the whole range of people, especially the people who voted for Triple C. They are nowhere currently. And everybody is looking upon Nelson Jamisa to come with a solution. Guys, come on. We cannot expect that. He has had enough. He's tried his best. Yes, we know he has got his weaknesses as a, as a political leader, as an individual. All of us have got weaknesses. The onus is now on us. Zimbabwe, Iweneni, Tinebasa. You cannot look forward to Sadat to solve our problems. You cannot look forward to, to South Africa. As Zimbabweans, we have to sit down and solve our own problems. I say even to E.D., He's lying to us that the country <laughs> is moving forward, is progressing. He's lying. Up until he starts believing, no, there's a problem in our country. Then we are going to start to have solutions to our problem. But if ZANU PF denies that they've got a problem in Zimbabwe, then we're not going anywhere. That syndrome of saying, we never have to be cabinet ministers. And taking all the positions and we are just debating on our social media zimbabweans we must wake up side time now we should be serious our country is burning zimbabwe we don't have water there in zimbabwe in most cities we don't have electricity <clears throat> i'm just mentioning these two major things because that affect most of us even vegas are not being affected with that but there are a whole range of issues that we have back home there. But we have good professors. Most of us here are educated. What's wrong with our Zimbabweans? Are we really educated? I ask myself, are we really educated? Why can't we solve our problems? Can we all of us run away from Zimbabwe? I feel sad for our youths. You know, our stand when they were telling me that, ah, this drug system, I mean, they, my drugs are in Zimbabwe now, they're even worse than, you know. When we grew up, Kubuta was taboo in our country. 
Yeah. Now everybody is sticking. The youth are sticking there in, 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 in Zimbabwe. And us as parents, we're not doing much. So my call is on, on all Zimbabweans to wake up and start doing something. Even if it's in in any bus, whether you're a student here in South Africa, you know what happened. The student participated in Shakespeare. They demonstrated. They didn't want to learn Africans. In Zimbabwe, hey, hey, guys, you can go to demonstration. If you are not prepared to die now, then let's not talk about any progress in Zimbabwe. Let's not talk about any change in our country. E.G. says it openly. He was prepared to die, but he reserved a room. They went through a lot, those guys. Why are we scared? Why are we afraid? That's my call. I haven't made to Chamisa. I said, hey, tell your guys to go on the streets. Demonstrate. There are many strategies. Because we all look upon Chamisa. He's got the following. We cannot deny that. I would like to conclude and say, I think it has been said here, that uh, we need to unite ladies and gentlemen, and they have a strong front. I like Zapu. He did that approach, which was national, nationalistic, which was something that could have taken our country, just like its leader, the late Joshua Ngomu. He is my true hero. And I want to end on that. Thank you.